afternoon, and welcome to another episode of The Spill. I'm Riley Bruand. And I'm Haley Freeman. A new report by the New York Times has revealed the extent of President Trump's history of tax evasion. In the last 18 years, 11 have seen Trump pay nothing in federal income taxes. More so, in 2016 and 2017, while running for the presidency and during his first year in office, he paid $750. Mr. Trump wrote off more than $70,000 to style his hair during The Apprentice and collected $72.9 million in tax refunds, which is currently being challenged by the IRS. He owes hundreds of millions of dollars to creditors due in, over the next four years, but even more concerning is the president's lack of transparency on the matter, calling the allegations fake news. With only a month until the election, these revelations are certain to have a major effect on the results. 95-year-old Lloyd and Winnie Fluster had to celebrate their 70th wedding anniversary at CIA Memorial Hospital after battling COVID for two months. Luckily, they fought together to overcome their diagnosis. Now they are virus free and will be able to celebrate their next anniversary at home. A nine-year-old student at Woodmere Elementary School in Louisiana was suspended after a teacher reported seeing a gun in the boy's bedroom during a virtual class. Even after his family said it was a BB gun, a school behavior report said regardless of the type of weapon, the action still violated school policy. The Louisiana Attorney General, Jeff Landry, on Friday said he is launching an investigation into what he called multiple violations of the state and federal constitutions, but also blatant government overreach by the school system. There was a black bear roaming around downtown Chattanooga for about three days that came in close contact with civilians, but didn't hurt anyone. Of course, having a bear around the city startled residents. So many, call, so many people called the police to have bear taken away. Chattanooga police resolved to euthanizing the bear after it had been tagged for being in close contact with civilians on several occasions. The TWRA officials said they put the bear down due to public safety concerns. Hi, my name is Sam Weathers and welcome to TV and Film. Throughout September this year, Netflix, Hulu, and Disney Plus are coming out with plenty of movies and shows to enjoy while we spend more time than ever at home. On September 1st, Netflix is coming out with 33 things to watch, some of which include Coneheads, Grease, Magic Life, The Muppet, The Muppet's Most Wanted, Puss in Boots, and The Smurfs. On September 11th, How to Train Your Dragon, and on the 21st, Real Steel. Hulu this month is coming out with some early 2000s classics such as Twilight the Series and Madagascar a Little Wild. Hulu is also coming out with some newer things such as The Addams Family on September 22nd and on September 28th, Season 11 of Bob's Burgers will be premiered, Season of 19 premiere Family Guy, and Season 32 of The Simpsons. On Disney Plus, they're releasing Cinderella on September, on September 1st, Season 1 through 7 of Once Upon a Time on September 18th. And most exciting, Disney Plus is releasing Mulan on September 4th. Mulan will cost $30 after an addition to the Disney Plus subscription. That's the bulk of what's coming out this September. I hope you guys enjoy all the new movie releases. 
SEC football started this past weekend with some high-scoring games. Number five, Florida beat Ole Miss 51 to, or, yeah, 51 to 35, and Lane Kiffin's first game is Ole Miss as head coach. Number 16, Tennessee won a close one against South Carolina, 31 to 27. In Mike Leach's first game as head coach for Mississippi State, he came out of Baton Rouge with an upset versus number six, LSU. The final score, 44 to 34. Number two, Alabama won their opener versus Missouri, 38 to 19. Number four, Georgia won 37 to 10 versus Arkansas. Number eight, Auburn beat number 23, Kentucky, 29 to 13. And in the last game in the SEC, number 10, Texas A&M won a close one versus Vanderbilt, 17 to 12. Outside of the SEC, there were some good games with number eight, Texas, winning in overtime versus Texas Tech, 63 to 56. Kansas State upset number three, Oklahoma, 38 to 35. And in the last good game of the weekend, number 21, Pittsburgh beat number 24, Louisville, 23 to 20. That's all we have time for today on The Spill. I'm Haley. And I'm Matthew. Have a great day, Walker Valley, and thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>